Fedu, you are a leader in your family, mm. and I always appreciate watching you lead your family to father to your kids. Your relationship with your dad, yeah, will you be highlighting parts of that? And yeah, hundred percent, because I think in the black communities we have a lot of fatherlessness, of and course. in the past, you know, there are reasons uh, for it that I didn't know and didn't understand, mm -hmm. and I realized that my dad's this time was completely different okay. uh, to my time and I didn't have that conversation until I was 30 mm -hmm. and that was during shooting the documentary because I just wanted to understand because I felt neglected, I felt not wanted and it didn't make sense why he wasn't there for me when I was a child and then I had a conversation with him. I asked him, I'm like, my man, let's sit down, let's mm -hmm. chat about this and he didn't want to do it. I'm like, trust me, I've learned to speak, it releases so much and so we sat and he explained to me like, being a black parent, number one, that time, mm. there wasn't a lot of opportunities. Of course. So he left PE and moved to Cape Town to go look for an opportunity. And then I asked him, why, did, why didn't you take me with, why didn't you raise me? Like, I stayed in a house mm -hmm. with my mom, and it's Ole, which is my grandmother. And in our community at the time, when you stay at home, your grandmother always raises your kids. Mm -hmm. So a lot started making sense. And then I asked him, what happened with, between you and my mom? My mom was young. When she had me, I think she was 16, and she still wanted to live her life. And my dad understood that, and he had to yeah. let her be, which made a lot of sense to me. And a lot of that anger that I had inside me, and a lot of, of like, you know, when we think our parents don't want us, we just chase them away without having a conversation. And that's what I want to bring back. We, as black men, need to have more conversation. We, as men, actually, in general, need to talk a little True. bit more and understand a bit more because situations are different. True. Sticking on the line of men, and him opening up. Mm. How much relief did you get that, yeah. okay, now well, my father is... Our relationship is not perfect even now. Mm. It takes time, those things take time. And um, I honor my dad, I respect my dad, I love my dad, and I will not start loving my dad because he is my dad. I'm not gonna get any other dad, you know, and he is the only like parent I got now, you know, and we try, we try, he's still, no, he drinks and I, I can't, I also stopped drinking because I couldn't control my liquor mm. because, you know, and I knowing that he also does so, I don't want to talk too much about that, but of course. I stopped drinking because I don't want Nick to struggle mm -hmm. with drinking. But I have drank since 2018, probably four or five times in between mm. then. And I try not drink because it doesn't make me a better person. It doesn't help my sport of as course. well. And this, I want to break that cycle for my family. I want Nick to be able to say no or control it, uh, be a much better person. Yeah. Um, and with my dad, we're good. We're mm. good. And actually, I'm excited that we're looking to buy him a house because uh, Rachel was actually at, in, in, in Kabecha now looking for houses. They haven't found one yet. And um, the kids love him. They want to be, be spend more time around him, but he is pouring for him in the, in the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs>